Hey guys, it's Matt with Bleep and Jeep. Today I want to talk about pinion angle and drive shaft selection. I get a lot of questions from you guys about how to set up your pinion angle and select the right drive shaft. Now those two things kind of go hand in hand. Today I want to talk about how all that works. Let's get started. So I needed some new drive shafts recently for the crawler and I decided to go with Adam's drive shaft and I ordered double carden shafts, custom length with a slip in the middle on the shaft. Now what does that mean? Let's take a look here. So if you look right here at the new shafts, this is what is called a double carden design. Basically it has two U-joints right next to each other and in this case it has a ball in the middle. This is a stock Cherokee rear shaft and you can see it just has one U-joint. Um, it also has the slip shaft up here on the end. We'll talk about that here in a second, but let's look at the other end of these shafts. The other end is fairly similar to a stock shaft with just one U-joint on the end. The difference is going to be right here where there's a slip in the shaft. Let's go ahead and pull this off. So right here on the new shaft, there is a slip. And you can pull that out and there's a huge amount of of slip in and out right there and compare that compare that to the amount on the stock shaft now the reason that you want this is because when your axle and your suspension moves up and down your Jeep may be here but your axle has to go up and down so you have to have a bit of play there for everything to move back and forth so your drive shaft needs to change its distance so that is the distance that this new shaft can change compared to this old shaft only had, what is that, like three inches that it could move back and forth. Okay, before we get any more confused, let's talk about the differences between a single carton and a double carton. So on your stock setup, this is your transfer case, and this is your, your pumpkin, this is your axle. So your drive shaft, comes out of the transfer case, changes angle with a single U-joint. Comes down, changes angle again with another single U-joint. So, if this is 30 degrees right here, then this angle has to be 30 degrees. And that's the way you want things to be set up. Comes out, changes, goes down, changes back. Now let's talk about the double carbon shaft. If you're setting up a double carbon shaft, things are a little bit different. You still have this up here pointing straight back. And the difference is your axle, you want that to be pointed up at your transfer case. So in this case, the drive shaft has a single U-joint on the back here, which points straight, and it comes up and then it has two U joints here. So this changes at 30 degrees and then it matches again with a 30 degree change right here. So these double carbon joints are pretty cool. This part right here is called an H yoke and there's just two U joints back to back. So there's a lot of YouTube videos out there that that show you how this works and I'll leave a link to a good one below. But basically when your U joint changes angle things speed up and slow down. So to counteract that on the opposite side you have to have another angle change to uh, even everything out. With a double carbon that does that all in this little short space right here. So right here I have a transfer case out of a stock Cherokee and a stock Cherokee on the rear has the slip yoke and on the front it has a double carbon from the factory. Now what you can do is remove this with a, and put a SYE kit, a slip yoke eliminator kit in there. And I've got good videos on that already, but I just wanted to go over it here. So what that does is eliminates this slip yoke part. So we showed you earlier how that has a little bit of a slip to it. And if you get a SYE, it'll convert this into one of these so you just have a, a yoke on here and it bolts up to it instead of slips in and out of it. Here's one more thing that I wanted to mention is that these drive shafts 
are in phase. So when they put these together, they line up the U-joints so that they're always in the correct phase and you don't want to get them out of phase, otherwise they'll start vibrating real bad. So these splines have to go in the right order every time. So what's really cool about these atom drive shafts, I just noticed, they have uh, little dots here on each side with an arrow so that if this comes out, uh, if your axle falls out on a trail or something, or if uh, you want to just take this apart for one reason or another, you'll always know how to put it back together and keep it in phase. So if you're going to take a drive shaft apart and it's not marked like this, what you need to do is take a chisel or some kind of marking device and before you pull those apart, mark each side so that you can get them back together in the right phase. Alright, so we've talked a little bit about drive shaft selection and pinion angle. Now you might be asking, how do you change your pinion angle? So your pinion angle is just, which way is this thing pointing? So it really depends if you are running long arms or adjustable control arms, you can adjust those control arms, the uppers or the lowers. Usually you want to adjust the uppers. Keep your lowers the, uh, adjusted for distance, forward to backward, and adjust the uppers to change your pinion angle. If you're running leaf springs, what you have is on the bottom of your leaf springs, you can buy shims and you can buy these, you know, two degree, three degree, six degree shims, whatever you need to change the angle of your pinion. So those bolt onto the bottom of your leaf springs and then your U-bolts go over all that. So that's how you change your pinion angle, either with shims for leaf springs or changing the adjuster, adjustable control arms if you're running control arms. And remember what we talked about, it depends on which type of drive shaft you're running as to which pinion angle you want, whether you want it to be straight forward or whether you want it to be pointed up at the transfer case. So another thing people often ask me is where to take your pinion angle from. Well the pinion angle number really doesn't matter all that much. Um, like I said, you either want it to be opposite of your transfer case angle, uh, which is usually straight forward, or you want it to be pointed up at the transfer case. But if you really need to know the angle, what you want to do is put it somewhere that's parallel to the pinion. So in that case, this is parallel to the pinion right here. So if you put an angle finder on there, an angle gauge, you can see I'm sitting at four and a half degrees of pinion angle. One more thing I need to throw in there, and that is when you go to get a custom drive shaft, they're going to want to know the drive shaft length. So to do that, you're going to have everything sitting at your ride height, normal ride height, and you're going to measure from here, right in the center of that cap. So it would be right here. Measure out all the way over to the other yoke on your transfer case, so right in the center of that cap. And in this case, that's 42, so we would need a 42 inch drive shaft for this. Alright, guys, thanks for watching. Now, if you need a custom drive shaft, check these guys out at adamsdriveshaftoffroad.com. They seem to have a great product, and I've heard nothing but good reviews about their customer service, too. So, check them out, adamsdriveshaftoffroad.com. Hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you next time. I appreciate it. Bye.